Hey guys, welcome to the shop. In today's video, I am going to cover the tramming of a round ram Bridgeport mill. Now, a lot of these principles apply to other machines. In fact, almost all of them. However, in this case, we're gonna have to do some specific quirks that are not unique, but are more relevant on this machine than they are on others. Now, I have extended the quill and, or spindle, depending on who you ask. I usually just call it the quill. Um, although, I'll probably call it the spindle too, so let's just be clear on that. And I've extended this all the way down and locked it. Now, the reason to do that is this magnifies any errors in your tram. I have also locked the knee because... You only lock the gib on one side, so what happens when you lock the knee is the whole table does this a little bit, and I like to do my most precise work with the knee locked. So I've just got this set up, and we have got approximately three thousandths of error with the quill all the way out. And I like to spin on the belts. I know other people don't. Actually, yeah, I've got a little more than that. We've got zero in the indicator, zero on that side. And we are two thousandths on this side, so actually not terrible. Uh, two thousandths over that size circle is not the end of the world, but you know, not ideal. So we're gonna correct that. This is kind of just a preventative maintenance thing I like to do. So I'm just cracking these two bolts loose. And I always forget what size wrench I need to do this, so I grab my adjustable wrench. I don't like to use the fine hand wheel, uh, or the hand wheel on here. I, I find it's good for rough adjustments, but we're gonna very gently leave it on the table. Check this again, because I did bump the indicator by being careless. So zero once more on this side. And I just want to take out one half of the error. Okay, so here's the cool thing. By loosening those two bolts, my tram is now perfect. So what we need to do is give myself one thousandth less of preload on this side to account for tightening the bolts. And that, my friends, is one of the reasons this style of Bridgeport turret was discontinued for the later dovetail ram style, because this is just more difficult to tram. And I am not a huge fan of it, but this is the machine I have, and therefore the machine I can afford. So I just have to wiggle this guy in. And it's hard too, because the thing is, the ram doesn't move consistently i.e. sometimes it jumps one way when you, you tighten the bolts and sometimes it jumps the other. And that, my friends, is just tedium. So I'm calling that good. Now it's another thing, don't tighten them all the way. Tighten one, then tighten the other, tighten the other, you know, back and forth and then check because you may have made a mistake. And you see here we are almost a full thousandths off again. Actually not quite, I mean we're half a thousandths off. So like I said, I think with the quill all the way out like this, um, 
I think half a thousandths is good enough. Now, what we're going to do actually, and I'm going to do this to demonstrate, even though you can't see the indicator, I'm going to unlock the knee. I'm going to crank up, which guys, manual mill, no power feeds. This takes a minute. Ugh. It's 50 turns to move the knee five inches. So what we're going to see up here, where I do most of my work, is a much smaller error. I'm looking down on it. I'm going to lock it. And locking the knee moves it about half a thousandth, so we're going to compensate. Zero the dial. So up here, we have slightly under, I'm going to call it about a third of a thousandth of an inch. Doing it one more time, because again, we want our measurements to repeat. That's the goal here. Yeah, I mean, we're repeating a few ten thousandths of an inch. Not the end of the world. I, I think that once you're within a thousandths over ten inches, that's plenty. I'll grab a ruler. I'm sure someone's going to argue with me about how big a circle we're inscribing. That's actually 12 and a half inches center to center on these, not 10. So the thing is per inch, even if it were at a full thousandths of an inch of error, which we're not, per inch on the cutter, that's like a tenth, 10 thousandths of an inch, uh, a little under. So like we're kind of in the micron territory of error. And I think that you don't need to be perfect. It's a milling machine. It's not a surface grinder. It's not, you know, it's just, this is a mill. They're not going to be perfect. You're going to have error, especially once you start considering that there's wear. Like this machine is not new. It doesn't repeat perfectly. It never has since I've owned it and it likely never will. So if you're kind of debating, well, is that half a thou or is that more than half a thou? You're plenty close for milling machine work, at least, in my opinion. You've got to be realistic about how accurate your machines are. You know, you start chasing tenths on a mill, you're just going to frustrate yourself. And if you're watching this channel, you're very likely a hobbyist. You're not a production guy. So excuse me while I give myself a hernia loading the vice on. Um, and we're not going to cover, there's a nut that is in the dead center of the table. I, I want to say it's a 532 screw. I'm not going to show you guys oiling that. I'm just going to tell you about it. So Take your vise off regularly and oil that. Uh, this vise is keyed, so we're usually pretty close. Not always perfect, but uh, again, guys, we're discussing the theory of good enough. So what I'm going to do is actually drop this guy down in the low range so the indicator doesn't spin. And... This is one of those things where I'm going to grab a hammer and we're going to tappy tap tap this guy. Oh, I need a small hammer. I need the right hammer. You don't need a big two pounder like this. A little sticky baby hammer like this is usually perfect. 
But again, that's my opinion. I know some people are going to want to use a bigger hammer because they might not have the hand strength or they might like to really choke up on it and almost use it as a knocker. So I'm going to jump back to the other side so I can see what's going on. Now, this vise is usually keyed well enough that I can stick it on and do most work. Well, I think I'm going to actually give the jaws a wipe. Just because they were filthy, and I did not notice that before I put the indicator on. So as these are shockproof, I'm pretty comfortable hitting on the vise directly without disengaging the indicator. You may have misgivings. You do you. Uh, I haven't killed this one yet, and I know people who've been doing this for decades and haven't killed one. Now, okay, there are people who do the quick tram. We'll tap on it while the vise is moving. I have not had good luck with that technique. Uh, this is just my preference and my style. I can usually get it pretty close on the first try. And we're off by about a thousandth. So again, if we're within the resolution of my measuring instrument on this vise, I tend to call it good because one thing I like to account for and consider is that the jaws aren't perfect. So try not to be a, just try not to stress yourself out. Okay, so we're back. Um, turns out all of that frustration was entirely unwarranted, tightening the bolts the way they were supposed to, straighten everything out. But we have one last thing to test, and I like to do this more or less on principle, which is just tramming the bottom floor of the vise, because I don't necessarily, if I'm doing a bunch of stuff all in one setup, I may not want to go and uh, have to retram the head in the middle of working. Uh, other people may not have such compunctions, I do. So I just want to make sure that the vise is reasonably close. Now the bottom floor of this is scarred from chips. So I'm just going to figure out the high side and snug that side a little more. I try to go by feel. I mean, we're pretty close. We're a couple tenths over six inches. So I'm just going to give this guy a tap, 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 tap. And that's as close as and tight as I dare to go. So here we are. You know, we've got the vise square to the travel, we've got the spindle square to the table, and we've also got the vise square to the table. Uh, there's two ways to do it. Now we can sweep it with an indicator. I'm going to put the machine back in high range so it moves more easily. I'm just looking for the clunk. That's one of the things, like these, this bearing housing is a little bit fussy. There's the clunk. You don't want to turn it on while it's partially engaged. That's asking for trouble. Uh, you can and will break stuff, so don't do that. So we're just going to sweep with the indicator. You know, and we're kind of inside the surface finish there. That's... 
that's a thousandths. And that's one of the tough things too, because there is wear on this vise, a lot of wear. It's, I believe, original to the machine. So I found that as long as the head is square, we're usually good to go. But, you know, you kind of just clean it and hope for the best. Uh, tappy tap tapping the machine like that, I can get it to within a thousandth or so. So yeah, just sweeping it again, even counting my parallax error, we're really close. We're within the margin of error. So hopefully some of you guys found this video interesting. It's not the most informative, but it's a little bit tough to do this unless I have an indicator cam. I think a head cam uh, like a GoPro would probably work ideal for this so you guys can see exactly what I'm seeing. So thanks for watching guys. Uh, it's always a pleasure getting to share this stuff with you. And I really...